solids, liquids, and gases, the three states of matter. It's all about energy. Everything we know is made up of small, tiny particles called atoms. And those atoms can stick together. If they stick together and they're moving very, very slowly, it's called a solid. The atoms are really stuck together. And in a solid, certain shapes can form. Those shapes are called crystals. Crystals are formed when the atoms come together and they're moving very slowly and they're held together very tightly and they form very peculiar shapes. This is a quartz crystal. This is a crystal of fluoride. You can dig it up from the ground. It looks just like this. The atoms are such when they slow down they form these very particular shapes. These are pyrite crystals, fool's gold. They form like this. I love these things. Look at them. They look like somebody made them, but in fact, the atoms, when they slow down and form a solid, form this crystal shape. This is a crystal of emerald. Now, this is man-made. People can take the chemicals, the atoms and molecules that make up emerald, they can heat it by adding energy to it, and then they let it cool. They let the atoms slow down, and all by themselves, they'll form this kind of a shape. You could do this yourself. You could take sugar, put it in very hot water, and then when it cools, the individual molecules will have separated in the hot water, and they'll come back together and form crystals. Crystals. Now you can take a solid and you can add energy to it and make the atoms move faster. When we add enough energy to a solid that we can break apart all of those forces holding it together, we call it melting and we get a liquid. And liquids still are held together with forces, but they're free to move a lot more than a solid is. So a liquid can actually take on the shape of its container and it can move. It holds on to itself differently and even though the little pieces still want to hold on to each other they form a different shape and those shapes are bubbles. The atoms of a liquid are free to move around and take on the shape of their container. You can move them Even though a liquid is free to move, there are still forces holding the little atoms together. And those forces cause bubbles. You see this little drop? It's held together there by the little forces of liquid. They're still holding on to each other a little bit, and it forms a bubble. If you kept adding energy in the form of heat to a liquid, you could even break apart the forces that were holding the atoms and eventually you would have atoms going all over the place every which way. If you continue to heat a liquid, you get the atoms moving so fast, you just press against the sides of the container and try to leak out of the container and push against the sides and just move all over the place. Lots and lots of energy. This is called a gas. And a gas just pushes against the sides of its containers until it leaks out. And that, of course, is what happens in a balloon. We keep putting the gas into it, and it pushes so hard against the sides of the container, it actually stretches this rubber band, this balloon, out. The atoms are moving so fast, they're pushing against the side of the container faster and faster and faster, stretching out, and if you gave them a chance, they'd all come out. Now the atoms are in the room. All around us is a gas. We breathe gases. We can't see it. We can only see it if we put it in a container, and it takes on the shape of that container. Well, the container is going to be a bubble. No. Oh, more bubbles. We fill the bubbles of liquid with gas. The gas is invisible, but it does take on the shape of the container. These containers are round, 
because the liquid is pulling on itself and it keeps pulling and it forms round shapes, it forms bubbles. Behind me you're seeing fog. Fog forms when gas turns back to a liquid. In this case, gaseous water turns back into liquid water droplets that are floating in the air. This is what it's like being inside of a cloud, I've been told. If the temperature outside is warm enough, then the water particles will once again return to gaseous state and they'll be in the air. They're invisible. So you start off with a solid. Atoms are moving very slowly, held together, and form crystals. If you add energy to this solid, you can get it to start moving faster. You break the crystal bonds, and you get it to form other shapes, bubbles. This would be a liquid. And finally, if you added a lot of energy to it so that you broke those bonds, you would have individual atoms shooting around, and that would be a gas. It's all about adding energy.